Welcome to the press conference for UFC 300. Thanks for coming out today. We've got Just a quick one to start out with you. Obviously, it's a, a big moment here. There's been a lot of rumors and hints being placed on social media. Any big announcements you want to kick this thing off with today? Don't believe anything you read on the internet. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. We'll start with, we'll start with Alex, please. Alex, you've, you've fought the best strikers in the world, of course, so I'm just curious where you think Jamal ranks in terms of his striking if you believe that he's going to be willing to stand and trade with you on Saturday. Alex, você lutou contra os melhores trocadores do mundo. Em que posição você coloca Jamal Hill nesse momento? Bom, Jamal Hill, para mim, como eu falei em algumas entrevistas, é, estaria ali no quarto colocado. É, eu acho que são, são estilos diferentes. É um jogo bom para mim, mas eu colocaria ele em quarto lugar ali. Jamal Hill, I put him in a fourth position. I've said this in a couple of interviews. Um, I think it's a, it's a very good matchup for me, but I will put him in fourth place. All right, I, Jamal, I'll, I'll ask you as well. Obviously, this is a big moment for you. It's been a journey to get here. What would be most sweet about this victory? Is it getting the belt back? Is it maybe shutting up some people that have doubted you? Like, what does this represent for you? Oh, make no doubt. I'm here to put him out. He got to go to sleep. Only one way to this end. It's, uh, it's okay with him ranking me as fourth. I'm okay with that. You know, whatever his opinions are, whatever. We're going to get in there and see. It's all. We're going to get in there and see. You already know how I'm coming. Thank you, Jamal. Quickly, I want to ask for Holly Holm, please. Holly, what was it about this matchup that intrigued you, right, that you were willing to say, yes, I'll step up and I'll welcome Kayla to the UFC? You know, I've, my whole life, I always want to fight the best to be the best, and I want the biggest challenges, and that's what this is for me. So it excited me, and I'm ready to take it on, and uh, I'm going out there for a victory. Thank you, Holly. And, and Kayla, I just want to say as well, obviously, welcome to the UFC. Obviously, uh, you know, an MMA champion at this point, a gold medalist, but where, is, where does this moment stand, this opportunity? Heck, even this press conference, this crowd, uh, where does it stand in your career thus far? Well, shit, UFC Las Vegas, what's up? Damn, it feels good. I got two things on my mind right now. It's a belt and a burger. I can't wait. Holly's a great opponent. She's a legend of the sport. I'm super excited to be here. I'm humbled. I'm grateful for the opportunity. And uh, we're going to throw down on Saturday night. There's a question for the BMF champion, Justin Gaethje. Just... <laughs> Justin, a big topic of this fight has been Max's chin. We spoke about it at the media day yesterday. Do you believe when you look at the wars he's been in that he might be the most durable opponent you've ever faced? Yeah, I think so. He's, a, he's an absolute warrior. That's why I've loved watching every single one of his fights. But more importantly, I'm fucking pumped to be on this card. Uh, the energy in the building is going to be insane. And uh, I got the perfect dance partner for this shit. We're both gonna go out there, try to hurt each other. I don't care how much he likes me or how much, or I like him. Our job is to fucking hurt each other and that's what we're here for. You just mentioned there that this is the perfect dance partner. You are the BMF champion. You're the one who knows best. Is this guy a perfect contender for that belt, the BMF title? Absolutely, he's a legend. Future Hall of Famer, um, you know, fan favorite. That's. That's what we both are. That's why you guys love this fight. That's why we're winning every poll when it comes to uh, the people's main event. And um, I thank you guys for that. Question for Max. Max, you are moving up in weight. You are moving up in weight. I know you've put on some muscle for this fight, but traditionally the guy moving up has a higher pace. Do you think your pace can outwork Justin's and that's how you win this fight? <laughs> the beautiful thing is we find out Saturday night, man. I can't wait. Justin's a legend. You know, I, I saw some comments saying that he don't, he don't want to stick around Sunday, so uh, I'm going to go out there and fight my hardest. This is a question for Charles Oliveira. Charles, you have fought the best of the best in this division. Legends. You or yourself are a Hall of Famer in the future. Where does Armin rank up against the guys you fought already? Charles, você lutou contra os melhores dos melhores, lendas da divisão e do esporte. Onde e você vai ser no, vai ser um, você vai, vai entrar para o Hall da Fama no futuro. Onde é que o Arma entra nesse ranking de pessoas que ele luta? 
Olha, com certeza, né? um cara duríssimo, como eu falei, merece todo o respeito. Hoje se encontra em quarto, quinto do ranking. Né? E, já lutei contra os grandes nomes, Dust Gate, Dust Porter, uh, Max Holler. Se eu for falar, vou falar de vários nomes aqui. Então hoje ele é o quarto do ranking, merece todo o respeito do mundo. Mas vocês estão falando do Leão, o Leão embaçado, o dono dessa divisão, Charles Oliveira, Charles do Bronx. Shirley, he's a tough guy, you know, he's a, I fought against the best, I, but right now he's fourth, fifth in the ranking. Listen, I fought against Justin Gage, Dustin Poirier, Max Hollow. I'm not even going to name them all here because I fought so many of them. Right now he's in the spot, fourth or fifth, but you know what? I'm the lion, I'm a tricky lion, and I'm the owner. I own this division. Armin, um, and when you hear that, that must get you excited. A chance to fight a legend in Charles. What exactly would it mean to you in your career to have a win over that man on Saturday? Yeah. I was expecting this. I'm so happy to be here and especially fight for the contender number one. And uh, I'm so excited to beat him and uh, I know I can do that and I'm going to fight for the title. Question for the champion Wei Li in the back. Obviously we've talked about we've talked about the magnitude of this fight and the importance of it for your country. But when you look across the octagon you see Yan, what exactly does she bring that you haven't seen in the octagon? We all know what this fight means for you. So, 看到小南的时候，你觉得他身上具有什么样的特质和他的呃技能，让你觉得他会成为你的对手？ Hello, everybody. I respect the Xiaonan. Xiaonan is very strong, mental, hard, body, very strong. I respect. Thank you. Similar question for your opponent, Yan. When you see Wei Li, a lot of people describe her as the perfect fighter with very few weaknesses. I'm curious, do you agree with that assessment, and what are you expecting from her on Saturday? Xiao Nan, same question. Everyone knows Wei Li is a very complete fighter. So, on Saturday, what kind of threat will she bring to you? I think we will bring a threat to each other, not just her. We will bring it to each yeah, I think we have the mutual respect to each other, and I don't do think both of us can give a big threat to each other as well. Question for Bo Nickel. Obviously, at Media Day, you said that your opponent, Cody, given he's also a former wrestler, he could present you problems that you hadn't yet faced in the octagon. So I'm curious, when you do break down Cody, what are some of those things that he brings? Well, obviously, you've seen uh, in his past fights that, uh, you know, he's been able to get takedowns. He's been able to uh, defend takedowns. And, you know, none of my opponents thus far have had a, you know, strong wrestling background. But, um, you know, I'm just looking forward to uh, going out there competing tonight. I know a lot of people are uh, upset about where I'm at on the card and for whatever reason. But uh, I'm just excited and uh, going to go put on the best performance of my career thus far this Saturday. <laughs> The question for your opponent, Cody. Obviously, you heard what Bo said. Uh, you, he believes you can present problems that he hasn't yet faced in the octagon. But you also said that you think this is the perfect time to face Bo because you can get him early. So when you do break down Bo's skills, what are some of the holes you think you can exploit? Well, you know, he's never been through the fire at all. You know, I, I've had my ups and downs in the UFC, but that kind of makes you. And uh, he's never had to face that. It's my job to go in there and make him answer those questions Saturday. Questions for Money Moicano in the back. What's up? What's up? Obviously, you've been on this. You've been calling for money. Mo Moicano wants louder, money. Louder, brother. Louder, brother. Not listening. It's going to be pretty difficult to get a bonus up there with all those opponents, uh, those fighters next to you. So, what do you have to do on Saturday to ensure you do get that bonus against Jalen? It's going to be hard to get the bonus. Many, many champions. It's a good fight. What's up, America? What's up, Las Vegas? Let me tell you something. I, before I answer, you are going to say something. UFC 100, I, I was watching UFC in my fucking couch. UFC 200, the fucking same. Now I'm here, UFC 300, and it's going to be a show, and we're gonna get the bonus. I'm gonna get the bonus. Similar question for Jalen. 
Moicano obviously calls that he's going to get the bonus. Are you even focused on something like that, or are you just focused on getting the job done against Hanato? I'm getting the job done at the end of the night, you know what I mean? Like, like we all see, there's so many champions, there's so many great fights on this card, it's going to be hard. Daniel, you should give us all a bonus if we get a finish. How about that? <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just going to go in there and do my job. Question for uh, Aljamain Sterling. Aljo, it's the night before your featherweight debut. How different do you feel right now uh, than when you were cutting to 135? Well, I have a lot more energy. I can talk to people. I'm not as irritated. It's nice to be out here and enjoy the press conference and see everybody out here. Man, this is such a huge event. I'm just, I'm honored. I'm privileged to be a part of this. And uh, I've had a long career with the UFC. I'm grateful for everything I've done and accomplished. And uh, Saturday night, I'm looking to accomplish a lot more great things. And for Calvin, you're about an arm's length from Aljo right now. You fought a lot of the best featherweights in the world. How does he look? Does he look like a real featherweight right now to you? Not really focused on Aljo, to be honest. Just focused on myself. It's been uh, 18 months since I stepped back in the octagon. And I'm here to let the featherweights know that I'm back. And uh, what a better, what, can't, can't pick a better fight card to be a part of than historic UFC 300. And I'm honored and grateful. And for Davidson Figueredo, uh, Davidson, yesterday Cody Garbrandt said at the media day that he's the one who asked for this fight and you didn't really want it. Uh, what's your reaction to those comments? Were you the one that wanted this fight as well? Davidson, ontem no Media Day, o Cody Garbrandt falou que ele tem pedido por essa luta, mas você não queria. O que você tem para falar para ele hoje? Oh, que eu tenho... Boa noite, galera. O ah, que eu tenho para falar pro Cody hoje? A galera tá acostumada a chegar aqui e me ver sempre xingando o Brandon Moreno, mas hoje tô lutando com outro cara. E, pô... I love, I love you, Brandon Moreno. And no more fighting. E, cara, é, eu não tenho nada para falar para esse cara. Eu só desejo sorte para ele e que Deus abençoe a vida dele. Eu só quero entrar sábado e sair com a vitória. No nocaute. Hey, good evening, everyone. I just wanted to say I know everybody's used to me just yelling at Brandon Moreno. Things have changed. I'm fighting a new guy. I love you, Brandon Moreno. Sorry, the game has changed. Well, I'm going to fight a new guy, finally. You know what? I got nothing to say to this guy. I just say, God bless him. I wish him nothing but the best. Hey, we're going to fight. I'm going to get the uh, victory on Saturday. And just for Cody, you've been waiting a long time to get your hands on this guy. Two different divisions. One was a title fight before. It didn't happen. How excited are you to finally fight him on Saturday? Let's give a big shout out to the UFC for putting this card together. Look how many amazing athletes are on this stage. You guys are in for a treat come Saturday night, and I'm ready to kick it off against a former world champion. A fight that I've wanted for so long, four years in the making. Here we are at Bantamweight, and I'm ready to take over the throne again. And just two quick ones for you, Dana. Uh, I talked to both Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje this past week, and they told me they want Mark Coleman to wrap the BMF belt around the winner on Saturday night. What do you think of this idea? Can we make this happen? Talking to me, what'd you ask me? Both Max and Justin told me they want Mark Coleman to wrap Done. the GMF belt. Done. And they also said for this special event, they would love to see the bonuses raised from 50,000. Can we do something special for this Saturday? What did you say? Both guys want bonuses raised from 50K for this special card. Can we make this happen? What should it be raised to? Three times. 100,000. 300. Go three times. 300. 300. 300. 300. 300. 300. It's done. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Stop asking me questions. My, my question is for. My, que my question. Go ahead, who has the next question? <laughs> my question for Bobby King Green and Jim fucking Miller. This fight has been 10 years in the making. Are you guys just happy that it's finally happening? And are you also kind of avoiding ladders and black cats and broken mirrors that, that it's not going to be done? Uh, absolutely. You know, um, like Bobby's been around for a long time. Uh, you know, 
I'm a fan of his the way he fights. He's he's definitely got an interesting style, um, and you know I I just love sharing the octagon with guys that I've I've been watching fight for so long. So I'm just I'm super excited for this fight. You know, like I said, it's been ten years in the making, and uh, yeah, like no better card than to uh, to to finally get to do it at UFC 300. Wow! Look at this fucking crowd. Holy shit! Let's fucking go. I'm assuming all y'all going to be there tomorrow. Everybody's coming to the show, right? I'm going to throw my jersey out. Please catch that motherfucker. You know? Um, your question. It seemed like it was more handed towards me than him. You know? Um, I'm a soldier, bro, and I do everything to put the it all on the line. Like, I had to fight two weeks notice. I cut 30 pounds. I made the weight. But after I didn't make the weight, I fucking, my lungs collapsed, my kidneys failed, I was in a hospital for a week, you know? Shit fucking happens. But with that $300,000 300, bonus, I'm going fucking in. I ain't missing shit. And then uh, one final one for Dana White. Dana, uh, what color is the canvas going to be on Saturday? Blue. <laughs> Blue. <laughs> Go ahead. Question for Sadiq Youssef. Sadiq, you you're doing? the star of Disney Plus. What would it mean to you to be the star of UFC 300 this Saturday? Man, this is a hell of a card to try to stand out at, man. Speaking for us on the prelims, Dana, I think it'll only be fair if we get bonuses for each section of the card. We're all, <laughs> we're all the stars is out here, man. You gotta make a prelim bonus, a, a post prelim, and then the main card bonus, please. There's $1.2 million in bonuses. Fight your ass off on Saturday. <laughs> That's the goal. That's the goal. Question for Diego Lopez. Diego, one of the stars of Lobo Gym, one of the stars coming out of Brazil. What would it mean to you to represent on Saturday? Diego, one of the estrellas of Brazil, one of the estrellas of Lobo Gym. What does it mean to you to represent both on Saturday? Uh, pues significa mucho para mí ser uno de los representantes de habla hispana acá en la FC 300. Uh, pues estoy muy feliz, muy emocionado de representar toda toda mi gente que está en Brasil apoyándome, toda mi gente que está en México apoyándome. Y vámonos, aquí estamos. I'm very emotional, I'm very proud of being the only representative of, of, of a country from a Spanish-speaking country in the UFC and also representing my Brazil for all of you out there in Latin America, in Brazil. Thank you so much. That's what I'm here. That's what we're here for. Let's go. Alexander Rokic, it's been a long time. Are you ready to win the Battle of Europe this Saturday? Absolutely. I mean, uh, after almost two years of layoff, what a comeback uh, on UFC 300. Uh, can't wait to step in the octagon on Saturday night and uh, to show the world who King of Europe is and after uh, of the world. And the question for Jiri Prohashka. Jiri, the fans are ready to see the return of the samurai. Are you going to bring him on Saturday? Uh, I'm, not looking, I'm not looking to be the king of Europe. I'm looking to be the king of the world. So watch, my, watch me, watch my return after that fight. I want to be targeted for, for the title again. Kayla Harrison. Kayla, you said not everybody knows who you are yet because this is your UFC debut. What do they have to look forward to on Saturday when they see Kayla Harrison in the cage? I don't know. You guys ever seen me throw an elbow? You're ready for some elbows, okay? It's going to be ground and pound. It's going to be nasty, and there's going to be a lot of blood on the canvas Saturday night. Jessica. Jessica, no passado, você teve uma fase ruim, pessoalmente, profissionalmente. Let's go, Hollywood! Em algum momento, durante essa fase, você chegou a perder a confiança? Você chegou a temer que a organização perdesse a confiança em você e até mesmo os fãs perdessem a confiança em você? Jessica, you went through a bad spell last year. Uh, you admitted it professionally and personally. Did you lose your confidence at any point? Or did you think at any point the organization was going to lose their confidence in you and the fans would lose their confidence in you? Acho que medo todos nós temos, né? Ainda mais quando a gente vem de três derrotas consecutivas. Medo a gente sempre tem. 
mas dentro de mim existe um leão e ele não para de rugir. E esse leão vai trazer essa vitória sábado agora. E eu tenho certeza que todos os fãs do UFC, inclusive a organização, pode continuar acreditando em mim, porque a Jéssica ainda não morreu. I, fear, fear is always there, especially when you come off of three straight losses. But you know what? There's a lion inside of me, and that lion has not stopped roaring. You can bet. On Saturday, I'm going to be back, and the UFC can continue to trust me, and everyone else can continue to trust me, because Jessica's back. Jessica ain't dead. Marina. Marina, nessa semana você deixou claro que você acha que vencendo no sábado, sua, próximo, sua próxima luta é pelo cinturão. Eu te pergunto, o palco está montado. O que, que você diria agora para convencer o seu patrão e os fãs aqui que essa chance é sua? Marina, you said this past week that this after this fight, next up is a title shot. The stage is set. What would you tell the boss to say? Hey, give me a chance. Next, I'm next. O cenário é perfeito. Uh, eu vou nocautear a Jéssica Andrade. Respeito muito ela, mas essa noite vai ser minha. E a minha próxima adversária vai estar no mesmo card. Não interessa, eu vou pegar uma garota chinesa na próxima luta. The stage is perfect. Everything's set up. I'm going to knock Jessica out. All the respect on the world, but it's perfect. I'm going to get this, I'm going to get the win, and I'm next for the title. You know, my opponent is right here on the card, and it's going to be a girl from China. Yeah. Charles e Poatan, essa pergunta para vocês. Vocês são brasileiros, não falam inglês, mas toda a luta que vocês fazem nos Estados Unidos, vocês estão cada vez mais famosos e ovacionados pelos públicos. A minha pergunta é, vocês acham que se vocês falassem inglês, vocês ainda teriam uma base de fãs ainda maior? Ou você acha que justamente por não falar, a curiosidade deles aumenta e a procura também? This is for Charles and for Alex. You are Brazilian and you don't speak English, but it doesn't matter where you are in North America. You're always a standing ovation, you're fan favorites. Do you think that because of the fact that you don't speak English, you don't tap into the, all those people and more people would love you for it, or is it the mystery of not speaking English that people are curious and interested in your personality? Bom, I think that things are happening and they have to happen this way. I have my difficulties difficulty. Né, para aprender o inglês, mas pô, a galera tá me aceitando, né, tô muito feliz, né, às vezes a gente vê é, muitas pessoas criticando, pessoas que não, que não falam inglês, não aceitam essas pessoas e pô, eu tô vendo que estão me aceitando e pô, tô muito feliz com isso. E chama! Things are happening for a reason. Things happen in their own time. You know, I have a lot of difficulty, but it doesn't matter. People have accepted me. A lot of people have criticized me. They say, you know, they don't accept people who don't speak English, but it does not matter. It does not matter because they've accepted me, and I'm very happy for it. So thank you so much. Shama! Cara, com certeza, aprender inglês é mais fácil de comunicar. Mas, de verdade, o amor é universal. Todo mundo sabe do amor, o carinho que a gente tem um pelo outro. Eu sou muito grato por tudo, sou muito grato por esse carinho gigantesco. Meu amor por vocês é gigante. Of course, speaking English is easy, would be easy to communicate, but you know what? Love is universal and I feel the love. So thank you so much for the love and I feel the love from everybody. It's giant. It's my love for you. It's enormous. Question. Question for Max all the way to your right. Max, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but if you win this Saturday, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but if you win this Saturday, you become the first fighter to hold interim, undisputed, and the BMF title, a feat that likely won't be replicated. How much of an honor would that be for you? Brother, without that record, I couldn't care less. You know, I'm excited that I got Justin Gaethje in front of me. And like, I, like all you guys like, I love it. It's going to be violent. So now there's 300K on the line. Oh my gosh, it's going to be even more violent. So I can't wait for it. Question for Dana down here. The UFC throughout the years have always topped the biggest moments. How do you think you're going to be able to top this card, which is widely considered like the greatest in combat sports history? Yeah, we, we say that every year. How are we going to beat last year? Uh, after 100, we said, how do we beat 100? How do we beat 200? We always seem to figure it out. You know, um, it's, it's, it's one of the challenging things about this business that pretty much everybody in the company loves. It's what we do. And you put time. sweet dreams in the main event. One more question, Dana. There's rumors that you're going to be going back to the UK in the July. Manchester has been touted as a possible location. Is there any truth to that? Yeah. 
Can you give us a date? Huh? Can you give us a date, perhaps? Nope. When we get it done, we'll let you know, but we're definitely going to Manchester. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this question is for Armand. Armand, your fight with Charles coincides with Armenian Heritage Month. Talk to me about the support that you've been getting from Armenian fans around the world in the lead-up to this fight, and especially after you got that knockout against Benil. Yeah, I represent Armenia. I'm so proud of it. And uh, Saturday, a lot of Armenian fans is coming to watch my fight, and uh, I'm so excited. And uh, I'm going to get that victory for you guys, definitely. This question is for the great Jim Miller. Jim fucking Miller. You are undefeated at 100 events. You won at UFC 100, UFC 200. How do you plan on keeping that streak alive? And if you win, will you come back at UFC 400? Uh, you know, my, my goal was always to, to make it my fight, fight to my strengths, keep the pressure on them. You know, uh, it, it's, it's going to be a fun fight. Um, and yeah, that, that's always my, my, uh, my goal when I come into the fight, right? Uh, as for UFC 400... If the bonuses are 400K, then yeah, I'm fucking back. Dana, can we make the bonuses 400, please? Can we do that? So Dana White, you have stacked the card. It's an incredible card. Your partners just had a WrestleMania last week. In your personal assessment, does this top WrestleMania? I don't know a lot about WrestleMania, so I have no idea. But uh, I stay in my lane. We do what we do. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're very pumped and excited for this card on Saturday night. And one more question for you. Every 100 events that happen, it's era-defining in the evolution of combat sports and the UFC. For you, the last 100 events leading up to 300, how was this era-defining in the evolution of combat sports and the UFC? Well, I think that we just, you know, like I said earlier, every year we, we seem to beat what we did last year. We continue to go into new uh, territories. Uh, we will this year, too. We're going to do a... Incredible card in Saudi Arabia pretty soon, and uh, going back to, uh, we're, work, we're literally working on Africa right now. We will probably do Africa this year, too. So, we're, 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 every year we, we hit these milestones and just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and, 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 and growing the business and growing the sport. You're the man, Dana. Thank you. Question for Dana. During media day, Jessica Andrade spoke about a potential female BMF title. Is that something you guys would be open to doing down further down the line? I think the BMF goes for either. For, for, could be for men or women. It's not there's a men or women's BMF title. You either are or you are not. And a question for Jamal. I see the interesting choice of water bottle right there. Can you speak a little bit more about it? Uh, you know, just uh, just uh, getting acquainted with the visual that I plan on seeing on Saturday night. I'm going to hold that head hey, up high. I'm going to make him remember this moment when I'm entering the octagon, when I'm playing my music, he'll remember this moment. I'll make him remember this moment when I'm in the octagon, when I'm playing my music, he'll remember this moment. I'll make him remember this moment when I'm in my walkout, about to go into the octagon, and my music is playing. I'll make him remember this moment. Write it down. Take a picture. I don't give a fuck. We getting it in. When you step in there with me, ain't nothing to talk about. Ain't nothing to say. It's all right here and I'm on your ass. Question for Aljamain Sterling. When you spoke just now, it was the first time in a long time where we heard some cheers going towards you. How did that feel? Is that extra motivation for your featherweight debut? You know what? It's actually kind of nice to get a couple of cheers. Um, man, it's been such a long ride, man. I'm just, I'm just excited to be back. I do this for the fans, chairs, booze, it doesn't matter. It all gives me energy. It all gives me motivation. At the end of the day, I'm coming here to do a job. Uh, my opponent's coming here to do a job and made the best man win. This question is for Diego Lopez. In español para todos los latinos que están acá. Eh, Diego, hace un año no estabas en la UFC. Ahora son tres performances increíbles, dos victorias consecutivas. Esta es una de las carteleras más importantes de la historia. ¿Qué hiciste para convertirte en esta bestia que sos hoy? Diego, a year ago you were not on the UFC. All of a sudden, three amazing performances. Now you're one of the most historic cards, the most historic card in, in, in the UFC. What did you do to turn into this beast that you are today? Uh, yo creo que 
Ha sido los 11 meses más locos de mi vida, ¿no? Pero pues muy contento, muy feliz por eso. Yo creo que Dana vio algo en mí y pues bueno, con esa noticia que la noche va a ser el bono de 300 mil, vamos a ver por qué yo, tengo, yo soy acá en UFC 300. México te adoptó. This, this, this has been the craziest 11 months of my life, but I think Dana saw something in me. And you know what? Uh, with the bonus at 300, uh, I, I, it's, I know why I'm here. Mexico adopted you, but... Now you have a full continent supporting you. You you know that all the Latinos are going to be behind you in this fight. Eh, sabes que México estaba siempre apoyándote, pero ahora tienes a todos, todos los latinos por ti, ¿no? Ah, uh, pues tener el apoyo de todos los latinos, todos los brasileños, y ahora tener también todo el apoyo de la gente de de todo alrededor del mundo, pues me llena de orgullo, ¿no? La neta, voy a ver porque yo estoy aquí con ese lugar en el C300, solo solo a postre peleas mía, ¿no? Yo creo que mucho tiempo He trabajado por este momento y la gente va a ver lo que él ha hecho. I've had all the support from everybody in, in Mexico and Latin America, also in Brazil, and now the support of people all over the world. You know, I think that people are going to see uh, in my, with my performance. I'm, I, I've worked a lot in my life to be here, but you're going to see with my performance why I deserve to be a UFC 300. The last one for Dana White. Dana, you talk about uh, Abu Dhabi, Africa. Any news about Spain? Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that, that's another one. I, Listen, all, all these markets that we haven't been to before, we're working on going to. But yeah, Spain could be a possibility too. We tried to go to Spain earlier. It's about availability of arenas is, is, is the problem that you have uh, when you try to go into some of these new markets. But absolutely, the answer is yes. And he was in our office today. So awesome. yeah. I'm going to take two more questions. I got you, Hawaiian dude here, and you, ma'am. Uh, go ahead. This question's for the former champ, Cody Garbrandt. Uh, after back-to-back -back wins last year, what did you make of, uh, like, what do you attribute that success to, and do you feel like you're the same hungry contender that took out Dominic Cruz back in the day? It's a great question. You know, I'm very grateful for the UFC Performance Institute. They hired a sports therapist I've been working with for two years, working on the middle. There's nothing that's different from me. Speed, power, my fighting style is all there. It's the middle, and uh, we'll show that on Saturday. Uh, you, you and Davidson like to uh, crack, you know, you guys like to stand and trade. What are the odds of this fight going the distance? Well, you heard Dan, it's $300,000 extra for a bonus, so you know I'm knocking his ass out. Awesome. Thank you. Go ahead, ma'am. This question's for Jim Miller. Jim, this fight is 10 years in the making. Mm -hmm. How do you feel now that it's finally fight week? Do you wish this fight would have happened in the past when you had tried to book it before? Or does this feel like the perfect time? Uh, I feel like this is the perfect time. You know, uh, shit happens, right? What, what we do, 26 fighters up here, what we do is not easy. Like day in, day out, we are beating the crap out of our bodies, trying to get better so that we can perform at the highest level inside the octagon. And it's a, it is dangerous. And, and things happen, you know, and um, honestly, I, I had other fights when, when this fight fell through, so um, it, it worked out, you know, um, but, you know, I, 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 gotta, I gotta say, like, with, with the announcement of the bonuses being as big as they are, I don't know if there's another man I want to be across the octagon from. You know, I think we match up really well, and uh, we're going to leave our mark on, on uh, that canvas uh, Saturday night. I can't wait to see it. This question is for Kayla. Kayla, you mentioned finally you can throw elbows again. How excited are you to do that in front of the godfather of ground and pound himself, Mark Coleman? Yes, I'm super excited. Honestly, uh, it's been a long and winding road to get here. There's been some ups and downs. God knows that it hasn't been easy. Uh, but this is what it looks like when you don't give up on your dreams. This is what it looks like when you have faith. This is what it looks like when you believe in yourself. I'm going to go out there on Saturday night, and I'm going to give it everything I've got in front of all of you. I can't wait. Thank you. Hey, one all more right. question. One more question. One more question, Danny. What's the word? Let's I ain't seen you in the building. What, what, what you you in the building. <laughs> Let's try to be good. Hey, look. The whole crowd that told me, man, look, y'all coming back to St. Louis. Everybody know the main event. Derek Lewis, hey, we love Derek Lewis, but you don't want to fight five rounds, Dana. Come on, 
Switch it up, man, to give your boy new master the main event of St. Louis in his hometown, baby. Let's go. Thanks for coming out today, you guys. We'll see you at the weigh-in.